I'm Donisha Gordon. Welcome back to DG Makes Math Easy. We are intentional about making math dimensional. Today, our topic is substitution. And so I'll be going through a few CSEC questions. Don't forget to like and comment below if this video is helpful for you. And if you have a friend who you know this might help, go ahead and share the link. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have subscribed, just comment, I have subscribed. If you have not yet, please do so and also comment so I can welcome you to the DG Makes Math Easy family. All right, and we will go straight into our questions. You will see the question on your screen. So here we go. Our first question says, I'll cut out this. Tablet never stuck. Given that P equals two, Q equals negative three, and R equals negative one, we should find 5p minus 2q. So we'll do that part first. One of the things we must remember is that 5p means 5 times p, 2q, 2 times q. So as long as we are able to read and interpret what the expression is saying, then we should be able, we should be well on our way. All right, so here we go. 5 times p, we're going to use a bracket for our multiplication. P is 2 minus 2 times Q, which is negative 3. And that is going to be equal to 10. It's the negative 2 times negative 3, which gives us positive 6. And that's going to be 16. All right. Easy peasy. We move to part B, which says we are finding the value of PQ plus PR. So again, that's P times Q plus P times R. So that's going to be two times negative three plus two times negative one. Two times negative three is gonna be negative six. Two times negative one will give us negative two and our final answer would be negative eight. So as we can see, it's pretty simple once we understand what the expression is saying. And if we can multiply um, integers, if we can multiply integers properly. Part C says we need to find the value of P R squared. Here, one of the things that students um, usually misinterpret is that only the R is being squared here. If it is that they wanted you to square P as well, P R would have been in a bracket. And so let us be mindful that only r is being squared so the value of p is 2 times r is negative 1 and we square that 2 so this would be 2 times when we square a negative we'll always get positive and so negative 1 squared will give us 1 and so that final answer would be 2 all right hope you are ready for our next question our second question reads given that a is equal to 4 B is equal to negative 2 and C is equal to 3. We are going to find the value of, and this one is fractional now, A squared minus B, C. All of that is being divided by B plus C. All right? Simple. So A squared is going to be 4 squared minus B times C, which is negative 2 times 3. Because I'm going to have two signs directly beside each other, we just use the bracket so we can um, to separate them. All right, B is going to be negative 2 plus C is going to be 3. And so we have 4 squared to be 16. We can do all of this at once. So this would have been positive 2 times 3. A negative times a negative, positive times 3. So that would give us positive 6. Negative 2 plus 3 would give us 1. And so our answer is 22 divided by 1, which is 22. Done. And so we're going to get our board clean for our third question. And number 3 says, given that M is equal to negative 3, this one is from June 1997, M equals negative 3, N equals 2, and P equals negative 1. 
And we need to find the value of m times p minus n all squared divided by 3p plus m. All right, and this is going to be negative 3 times p would have been negative 1 minus n, which is 2, and all of that and so on. Whatever we get when we simplify this, we will, when we evaluate this rather, we will square it. 3 times negative 1 for our denominator plus negative 3. And that will now give us negative 3. We work out our bracket. Negative 3 squared divided by, we start to work on our denominator as well. 3 times negative 1, negative 3. Positive times a negative will give us negative 3 as well. Let's go to this side. So this will be negative 3 times negative 3 squared will be 9 divided by negative 6. And that gives us negative 27 divided by negative 6. A negative divided by another negative will give us positive, And so we can ignore the signs and know that our answer will now be. And we can leave our answer as an improper fraction but also remember to simplify it. And so when we simplify 27 divided by 6, we will get 9 over 2. I hope by now you are comfortable with this. And so we're going to do just two more questions. Feel free to pause the video whenever they come up on, the, on your screen, whenever the question comes on your screen. Feel free to pause the video and work it and then see my solution. Our next question comes from June 2003 and it says if A is equal to 2, given that A is equal to 2, B is equal to negative 3, and C is equal to 0, evaluate for A minus 2B plus 3C and we're also going to be evaluating A to the power of C. Here we go. 4 times a, which is 2, minus 2 times b, which is negative 3, plus 3 times 0. That's pretty much 8, positive 6, 8 plus 6 plus 0. That will give us 14. Quick and simple. Let's go to a to the power of c. That would be 2 to the power of 0. And if you know your laws of indices very well, you will know that any number raised to the power of 0 will give the answer of 1. Now for our final question. And I hope by now you're getting much, much better at this. Now for our next question from January 2004. If P is equal to 5, Q is equal to 0, and R is equal to negative 3, find the value of 4P minus QR, and we're also going to find the value of 2R cubed. 4P minus QR will be 4 times 5 minus 0 times negative 3. 4 times 5 will give us 20, and 0 times another number just gives us 0, so we can leave our answer as 20. And for the next part, we have 2 times r cubed. Again, it is only the r that is being cubed equals 2 times negative 3 cubed will give us negative 27. 2 times that will give us negative 54. Our final question comes in the form of a quadratic equation. It says, find the value of P if 3 is a root of 5x squared minus Px minus 18 equals 0. The first thing you need to ask yourself when it says 3 is a root of that equation, what does it mean? It simply means that this equation has two possible x values and 3 is one of them. So we are going to simply substitute... 3 as the value of x and now we have 5 times 9 minus 3p minus 18 equals to 0. 
5 times 9 would give us 45 minus 3p minus 18 equals 0. Simplifying this, we get negative 3p, 45 minus 18 will give us 27. So that's positive 27 equals 0. We're solving for p, and so we are going to get rid of 27 minus 27 minus 27. That gives us negative 3p is equal to negative 27. We're dividing both sides by negative 3. And so our value of P would be 9. That's it for substitution. As you can see, it was pretty simple. If you were able to benefit from this video, you can just click like. Don't forget to share with someone else and stay tuned for our other videos on the basic concepts that need to be covered for the CSEC syllabus. It's DG Makes Math Easy. We are intentional about making math dimensional. I'm Donisha Gordon. Thank you for joining me today.